you do it. Touch them together. Ready? Hey everybody. So most of the projects I've been doing around the house, I have not been recording. They've just been too chaotic and, um, you know, it's evenings after work. So the kids are running around and, um, you know, trying to help me, help me and, uh, that kind of stuff. So I haven't recorded most of those, but, um, we did pretty much finish with the upstairs bathroom, uh, the renovation, the new tub and everything. Um, the last thing to fix is the fan. Um, the bearings on the fan motor went out, so it, if you turned it on, it would just squeal and scream and all that. So um, when I first investigated that, it was before we did the force remodel, um, and discovered that this fan vents directly into the blown-in insulation in the attic. It's not vented out of the house how it's supposed to be. So, I've got to fix that. And so the only attic access in the house is the top of this closet. And uh, give you a little perspective here. It's only it's only about 18 inches by 20 inches, and it's in the top of a closet with the shelf. And in order to get up in there, you have to climb up a ladder and do an S-curve around that shelf and go up through that little bitty hole to get up into everything. And for several very, you know, obvious reasons, that ain't going to work for me. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut our own access panel here. We've got a light in the hallway and a smoke detector, which I've taken out. Um, we might need to move that. I'm not sure. But I've got, I've got some room here between this wall and either the smoke detector or this light fixture. We already know the rafters are running this way. So I need to figure out where the rafters are so we can cut in between them to uh, cut an access panel in, and then I'll show you how to do that. Then we'll have fun getting through all the insulation stuff, and uh, we'll end up putting like some uh, door trim or, or wall trim around the edges of the hole to hold that piece of, of drywall in place so that um, you know won't have stairs or a ladder or anything, but um, if you need to get up there, you'll be able to push up on that panel just like you can in this closet. But you'll be here in the hallway so you can actually fit a ladder and not have to be a contortionist to get in there. So we'll put you on fast motion. Or maybe not. No. Let me get you set up and I'll show you how to use a stud finder. Um, the previous owners of this house had like a little kid's coat rack and shelf thing hanging here. And so they put in screws and drywall anchors because they didn't hit the studs where they wanted to put the shelf at and typically your light switches and things like this have to be mounted to a stud so either this side or this side should have a stud so get your stud finder um, it's got felt on the back so you can rub it on the wall and it's okay this one will actually pick up um, power lines and uh, water lines in the wall so if you come across uh, um, your your power in the wall this little lightning bolt will light up so you gotta hold down hold down the button here put it on the wall hold it down it's ready to go see it's telling me there's power and it says I'm getting close to the edge of something so it says the studs on that side of the switch and keep going until and see now I don't know if you can still see that the uh, power light went out so it tells me that the power line see there it's picking it up again
okay? So what you'll do is, and it, it works right side up and upside down, okay? Okay, we know the stud is on this side, so we go slow. Give it a chance to really um, send its signal through the drywall and figure out where that stud is. See here it's starting to come up. And you can see this arrow, so what I'll do is take my mechanical pencil here and I can draw that line on the front of the, draw the line of this notch on the stud finder and that will pinpoint the edge of that stud. So then I can come to this side of it. See, it's telling me it's way over here. And that's, uh, that's too wide to be a stud that's on edge. So what this probably is, because that's about the width of the flat side of a stud, that's probably the studs for the wall in the back of this closet. So, um, in the corner of this next room. So we've got plenty of area here that we know that if we drill into this, you'll be able to hit stud. Another thing you can do is um, you can use a magnet and what'll happen is the magnet will find the screws or the nails used to put the drywall on and the magnet will stick. And so you'll know that there's a stud there because that's where the screw for the drywall is. Another thing that's uh, a bit less reliable is you can knock on the drywall and you, you typically can hear the sound difference between kind of the hollow space of the wall versus where it's right over top of the stud. Did you hear that? Hollow, not hollow, hollow again. Did you come to help me? Hmm? He won't get you. What, what happened? Okay. So I took the ring off from around there and I double checked these wires. They are hot. So I've got power coming to them. The, the smoke detector I took down was actually battery powered and these were just coiled up and shoved into the hole. Um, you can see I've got my little bump marks from the stud finder that shows that that's one side of the stud and that's the other side. And then over here, there's another one. And so, in between these two, about 24 inches apart, which means if I go 24 inches from this mark, that puts me at this wall. So I want to verify that they're 24 on center instead of, like wall studs are typically 16 inches apart. So I'm going to show you how to double check that. Okay, I just got a coat hanger and I got it all straightened out. I put a little bend in the bottom and a 3 inch bend on the top. And the bends face the same way so that if I shove this up into the ceiling and get it through the drywall to where I can't see it anymore, I'll know which way it's pointing based on the other end. Okay, so we'll go ahead and bend these guys out of our way here. And see. We think the stud is on that side of the box, so if I push this up, yep, I'm hitting something right there. If I go up here next to it, see there's, it went right up in there. And I can tighten the wires. So, what I'll do is, if I want to have my opening come from these marks on this side of the smoke detector and go this way and my other one is 
over here, I should be able to shove this wire in about right here and twist it around to feel where that uh, joist is in the roof. We got this up into the ceiling and we can tell it's kind of pointed back at me. I can push it up and I feel a little bit of the resistance so I can tell it's in the insulation. I'll go ahead and twist it around. That. See it's pointing that way, it's almost straight that way. Flip it around this way. See it, it's about straight this way. It doesn't want to turn anymore, it's just flexing the wire. So I know that I'm up against the side of the, the joist in the ceiling right here. Let's see if I can get it to scrape. There, see, you can, you can kind of hear that it's um, the wire scraping on wood. Let's flip around the other way. It's scraping on wood so we know that we can safely cut along here and be in between this joist and that one the other thing we need to double check is where these wires go because we don't want to cut through wires all right so I, I checked the wires with the voltmeter it is a live wire I don't know really where it goes if I run with a stud finder it comes I can tell it goes out this corner of the box and I, I, it shows up in this area with the, the stud finder, but I don't know where it goes from here. It's possible it goes into this uh, room. So what I've got is if, if you've got a house you're working on that your, your wiring's unfamiliar or you've got lots of uh, incorrectly done wiring like this house does. Um, get one of these it's a, a combination tool and get the accessory kit that goes with it um, what I can do is I can connect the gator clips on this to those wires and then the other end of it is a plug I can plug in the bottom piece of this here thanks buddy So I can plug in the bottom piece of this into here and what it'll do is um, it will send a signal through the wires that I can use the other half on the breaker panel to figure out which breaker it's on so I can turn it off. That way if I do accidentally cut through the wires it's not going to spark and cause problems. So let me get that hooked up. Okay, the black wire is supposed to be the hot side, the white wire is supposed to be the neutral side. So we'll hook up this clip to that wire, and this clip to that wire. Now we've got our plug. This is going to take two hands. Let me plug it in. Okay, so it's plugged in. And this is doing two things. One, using these lights on the bottom, it's, it shows you a code of the of kind of the status of this wiring. And right now it's telling me that it has an open ground, which is bad. All grounds should be connected to a grounding rod so that things don't have to find their own way. Okay, so this is already sending a signal. See, transmitter. So well, let's go down to the breaker panel. Okay, so we're at the panel. You can see some of the breakers are marked, some of them are not. So, we turn on our wand here. Okay, it's looking for the signal. It's not finding it there. Let's try over here. Okay, so it, it's blinking at me. It's telling me that this is the breaker that we're connected to upstairs, which is 
labeled as both spare and basement. So we know these labels aren't correct, we can't trust those, but what we will do is turn off this breaker when we cut through the ceiling. That way we know we're gonna be safe. dusty here but um, we got the ceiling piece out and all the insulation that was up above that you can see there's quite a bit of the blown in insulation there's a little bit of the pink stuff we got a strong back sticking out and it's piled up all the way around so uh, the plan now is to make a path from here about three feet that way and then over mm, about six feet to where the fan is for the bathroom and then we'll need to dig away all the insulation that's around that and uh, find us a spot to where we can attach a new fan to one of the rafters and then go from there straight up to um, vent it out through the roof. So I shoved a flat pry bar up next to the vent in the bathroom. So hopefully um, it's like a foot long and the insulation is about that deep. Um, hopefully we'll be able to see it. I'm gonna try and climb up my ladder here to look inside and hopefully I don't whack myself on that. Um, if I do, I'll just cut it off. So, all right. Here we go. Yeah, I cut it off. All right, here is the uh, sea of insulation across the house. And let's see if oh, what do you know? There it is. That is the pipe for the uh, bathroom vent and you can just barely see that blue thing behind it that's the uh um that's that pry bar i shoved in there but yeah that's where all of our hot steamy showers were venting right here into the insulation and i mean luckily i don't know how long it's been doing that how many years but it's uh there's no like you can see there's some moisture staining on that roof rafter a little bit. But the sheathing's clean, there's no mold, there's no mildew. There's just, uh, well that, that big black pipe is the, um, the, <coughs> the toilet vent. Um, and then further over that way is, um, the other vent that comes from the kitchen so we've got to go from that pipe straight up it's uh, nice and cool today it's in it's raining right now in fact um, I decided it would be best to do this on a cool rainy day because typically your attic space is uh, scorching hot um, so now that I know where things are at and where I've got to go with it, I can make a plan to uh, blaze a trail over to the where that vent pipe is and uh, make my plan for putting the vent out through the roof tomorrow or maybe the next day, depends on the weather. This home improvement repair project is brought to you by Pizza. The uh, vent is a little further over than I expected it to be <clears throat> but I finally dug my way that way and over to it 
and got all the insulation dug off from the top of it and all around it so I should be able to pull it out um, <clears throat> without dropping in a ton of insulation like happened with cutting this access panel. Excuse me across these boards they're only 46 inches so they're just shy of the four feet I need to cross three of these at once so I have to you know have one knee on each one and shimmy out to the next rafter and then shuffle it forward to get onto the next rafter so that I can keep moving forward so that I could shovel my way that way and that uh, you can see that blue pry bar sticking up on the far side of it and uh, that vent hose that was just sticking up to the insulation. While I was digging that insulation I found the little uh, flapper that's supposed to be inside to prevent back drafts, cold air coming down. So um, that probably explains a lot of things. But um, all right, I got I got that all dug out. So now um, <clears throat> maybe tomorrow because it's it's uh, getting late for the me to be making too much more noise. Uh, tomorrow I can use the sawzall and <clears throat> cut between the box and the rafter. Cut through those nails so I can just pull that box out. Um, and it is a, it's like an eight inch or eight and a half inch um, square box. And the replacement one's going to be bigger. So if anything, I'm going to cut the hole more back this way. I mean, I might even just move it totally and just patch that hole. I can do that. It's, that's easy enough to do with just drywall. And I'm going to have to <clears throat> redo the ceiling texture and all that stuff by anyway. So, okay, that, that's it for today. We'll see what happens tomorrow. See, this is one of the things that drives me nuts about the big box stores is you have end cap crap they drop in an aisle and then they dump overstock and returns in the same aisle and can't be bothered to put it away so now customers have to move their crap out of the way so that they can actually get what they came here for You do it. Touch them together. Ready? <gasps> Did it beep? <gasps> what did you do? Well, I'm back up here in the attic. Uh, like two days later, um, the weatherman lied nice to have his job and uh, we got <coughs> we got a couple inches of snow so I've had to wait for all that to melt off and the roof to dry out so that I can finish putting this vent in so let me show you what we're doing here that's the hole for the vent and I've measured from the vent through the elbow and it comes out to eight and a quarter inches from the side of the the vent to where the back of the elbow is. So what I've done is I've measured eight and a quarter inches from the side of the hole and that's where I put my measuring tape down and then I've put that up to the sheathing on the roof. So I know that that is the back edge of my hole so I need to, uh, and it's a four inch vent tube. So I need to mark that and then um, go four inches back this way and mark again, that'll be the back side of my hole. And then in the middle, I will put a screw up through the sheathing and all the shingles 
so that I know that's the center of my hole that I can cut in from uh, the top side of the roof. All right, now that I've successfully got all of the neighbor dogs barking at me for being on my roof, um, here's the one vent pipe. I've tied my extension cord to that and I've tied it to um, the railing so that it can't get pulled either direction and uh, pull anything off the roof or come unplugged. I've got my saw to cut the hole, um, hammer and pry bar to peel up shingles, measuring tape to make sure I get it right. So uh, I'm going to start loosening up shingles. Um, I know I have to go at least to the next level up. Um, I hope I don't have to go too, but it depends on if they caught the end of the bottom of, of this tab of shingles on that row of nails or not. So let's dig in. Get the hole cut through. So you can see inside. And right there is the uh, opening into the bathroom where the fan's going to be. So we are right on the money. Hey babe, what? you always wanted to skylight in the bathroom, didn't you? Not that way. Alright, so I got the van in place, I got the shingles all trimmed to fit around the outside edge of it now. Um, so I've got this one loose, the next one loose, uh, and this row loose. Next step is pull this out. Put the uh, roof pitch around the hole to catch the flanging all the way around so that will make sure it's repelling water and water tight. Then uh, put this in, nail it in, then nail this row and the other side back down. And then we'll use a little bit more pitch to reseal all these shingles down to make sure that. Uh, Everything's going to stick because we've got a high wind advisory for tomorrow and I'm going to make sure that nothing's going to peel back up. And there you have it. It's all nailed in place. The shingles are all back down and I even put a bead of the roofing tar around the three sides of it there to help shed any water that comes up behind it or anything any of the snow melt that way we don't get like a mini ice dam or something right there it'll all slough off and come down off the roof like it's supposed to now we need to go inside measure from the throat of this guy down to where the fan will be to cut our um, ventilation pipe to fit in between and then get that on and taped in place the way it's supposed to be and then get the fan all rigged up. All right, we're back in the attic again. I've got the new fan box kind of in place. I've got the elbow on it. And I need to measure from the elbow up to the new vent. And then uh, climb back out of here cut that piece and then come back up with the tape and get it all put together um, I also need to run the new wires um, for this because we're going to it's a it's a fan and a light and we're gonna split it to be on two different switches so you can have um, I call it a P light just a dim light for the middle of the night so you can go to the bathroom without having to turn on all the lights above the vanity and blind yourself and then be able to turn the fan on independently so that you can leave it running without lights on if you want. So uh, I'll do that and then catch back up with you. Got the vent pipe in, got all the seams taped up, it's now uh, hole in place. I've got the fan box screwed in place. Now I need to uh, hook the wire to it. Probably should have done that first. And then uh, chase the wire um, 
down the wall to the switch. So what I'll do is I'll get one end hooked up here to the fan, how it needs to be, and then I will tape the other end to the old wire and get it kind of laid out and then um, pull the switch out of the wall and pull the wire down that way and then cut off my excess um, at the switch. I'll leave a little bit up here too just in case but yeah that should uh, that should take care of that. Windstorm finally quit. It's like seven o'clock at night. You can see we haven't had any of the shingles peel up. That's the new vent that we put in uh, yesterday. Um, nothing peeled up around it. Everything's still down good and tight. Um, we didn't have any damage from it. There's been a lot of damage reports um, around town. Um, about 15, 20 minutes ago, I was hearing chainsaws. So. I'm sure some folks around here have lost trees or something, but um, I didn't get a whole lot done because of a bunch of other chaos that was going on today. But I did get all the wires pulled apart and I figured out where most of them go slash belong. So let me go in and show you that. When in doubt, make yourself a schematic. So I drew the box where each of the cables comes in or out of and then went through and figured out what all of them are. Um, the last two, I know one of them goes to the fan. I'm pretty sure it's number six, but um, number five, that's this neutral hot right here, not connected to anything, but nothing in the house is out. No, no lights, no outlets, no, I mean, it's like it doesn't connect to anything. Um, so what I'm going to do is leave it disconnected for now. And then um, I need to get a new box. So I'll have to pull all of this apart again. Um, get the new box in. Get the wires pulled into it. And then um, I'll need to go back up into the attic and try and figure out. Because I, I can tell where 5 and 6 come in. Um, or at least where they come into this wall from the attic. Um, I'm not sure where the one goes. It just kind of disappears into the insulation and heads off in a direction where there isn't any, um, like there's no extra lights or, or anything else. I don't know why it would be going the direction it is. Um, and then at the same time, um, I'll be able to have my wife or somebody come help and pull on this wire while I feed it down from the top to make sure it gets through the, the header to come down into the wall so that we can have the correct wire to split the fan from the fan light. I'm sorry y'all, I got carried away with uh, getting work done and forgot to record what I was doing. So, remember I hooked up the wires and had it coming over to pull down to the switch? Well, that same cable was nailed to the stud in two places inside of this wall. Um, there and up there. So I had to cut holes in the wall to pry those staples out in order to pull the new wire. Um, I got it pulled, I got um, the new split switch put in and the same vanity switch so now that switch controls the vanity lights and then the top switch turns the fan on and the bottom switch turns on the light so if you need just a little light like in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom you got that. Um, and then I've started cleaning up. Um, so anytime you have to cut holes in the wall to chase wires and things like that, you want to um, 
save the pieces that you cut out and then what you do let me flip you around here what you can do is you take a, a strip of wood and you can you know, put it in like this right here or you know here and here or you know however you want to do it sometimes you can go diagonal across it but you screw it in below and above the hole and then you put the piece you cut out back into the hole and then screw it to the piece you put inside the wall and then all you have to do is fill in around it you know put put your tape on then you know texture and paint and everything but that saves you from having to buy drywall in order to replace what you've pulled out um, and then there's there's lots of other tricks you can find them doing that um, but yeah the fans in the fan and the light work um, everything's pretty well put back together um, I just grabbed a wall plate so it doesn't match anything in the bathroom but we're planning to repaint and stuff anyway so that wall plates likely to change um, so now it's uh, I need to do um, that guy I need to put some strips of wood along each of the sides so that uh, I can cut the trim that goes on the outside and then the trim will actually hold up um, the cover the, the board that I'm putting in there um, and so you want to have something secure that though the trim can connect to so you gotta put the wood strips around the inside first and then do the trim all pretty like with mitered corners and I still got to get set up to do all that stuff so that'll be next okay so you can see I got screws bottom and top where I put a piece of wood in there and then screwed the pieces of drywall back in I'm not sure what happened to this one so I had to scab a piece um, from somewhere else did the same thing there and then got all the trim put in got the wood on the inside that the trim is nailed to and got this plywood in there it fits nice and tight um, so now on a less windy day we could come back and paint this we could even texture this and paint it if we wanted to to match the ceiling that kind of orange peel whatever you want to call it um, and so that's all done I can put the uh, smoke detector back up there I just need to move it to the side just a little bit for using the trim but all in all it's good to go the, um, I had my wife take it for a test drive and with the door shut and the fan on the mirror only got steamy to well not quite halfway so almost almost halfway which is way better than the previous one I mean it would even with the old fan when it when it was running buddy who gave you a spatula? Door. 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 All, all fixed? Yeah. So, um, yeah. Hi, everybody! The kids are trying to help. So, um, yeah, the old fan, it would fog up the whole mirror. Oh, hey, but, okay, thank you. Uh, it would fog up the whole mirror and the whole room would stay steamy for a good 10 minutes or so after you were done Be gentle um, So yeah, this one I mean it was The room wasn't steamy with the sh with, you know when the shower was done and then the um, Like after you opened the door it was like two minutes and like it was all gone so Cool